guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, I am on today to share with you a project for BB Craft. Now um, you might have seen a recent haul um, where I got, um, so if I can spin them around on my tray here, I got all of these um, settings and cabochons. So let me just zoom back, oh no, all the way, zoom all the way out. I'm making you all feel sick. Um, so there we go. So I got um, loads of these gorgeous little settings and the glass cabochons um, that go on top. In my previous haul, I got some um, jewelry making tools and I got um, these electroplated um, little like rondelles. And in this one, I also got these um, beads with leads on. So it's a mix of things that I've got over the past, sort of last two hauls from BB Crafts. Um, and what I decided to, to make were these. Now you can use them for loads and loads and loads of different things. They can be earrings. Um, you could use them as dangles. You could use them as all sorts. So um, that's embellishments and charms and things like that. So you can see that I've done two different styles. I've done some with the cabochons and the, the tray settings, and I have done some, see if I can show you these a bit better, with these gorgeous um, maple leaf beads. And the beads are iridescent, so they sort of change colour depending on the light. Sometimes they're purpley and sometimes they're more gold, depending on what, um, what part of the foil was laid down when they were made um, and how the light hits them. Really, really beautiful. So obviously, if you made them matching, you could quite happily wear those as a pair of very beautiful earrings. Um, or you could use them for what I'm going to use them for. And the reason I've made them is because, as many of you like to know, I love to crochet. Um, and I often use these plastic crochet hooks. And they're, they're okay. Um, but they do very easily um, snap undone. And, and I find that they, they snap undone the slightest thing and then I end up losing my stitch marker and losing my place. And often the plastic on them is really, really rough. And as I pull it through, it will often snag. Whereas these, because it's a, um, an earring finding, it's really smooth. It's really um, narrow gauge. So it fits on there beautifully. And they're just really, really beautiful to look at. Um, and I just thought that they're just much prettier to look at whilst I'm doing my crochet um, than these horrible plastic ones that um, don't really serve the purpose that I want them to. Um, and the tiny um, settings and cabochons are actually really lightweight. So as you can see, that is not pulling on my yarn in any way, shape or form. I've actually um, used them on fingering weight yarn as well, and they are super light. Um, not much not much heavier than the plastic ones at all so they don't pull uh, I, even on the finest yarn that i've been crocheting with they haven't pulled um, and because they're they're super thin in gauge on gauge on the ear wire um, you can use them um, if you're doing like aragurumi with with really thin gauge cotton um, so i really love them for stitch markers and obviously you could use them for knitting or crochet they will slip over your needles um so if you were if you were knitting and you wanted to to pop one on your needle they because they're nice and wide at the top there they will slip over your needle and then you can carry on knitting so so they work really well for both um crochet and knitting um and i really really love them so um, I'm going to show you how I made them. Um, now, as I said, um, the majority of the supplies for this I have got from BB Craft. There are a few bits I didn't get from BB Craft, um, but um, you can actually get everything off of BB Craft. So I will link as much as I can in the description box below. Um, and I thought I would just share with you this other one that I made. Uh, I'll just zoom in a bit so that you can see her. Um, the lighting's not great in here, um, but I've made this gorgeous little um, pendant dangle, which has got one of the bigger um, cabochon settings um, with the, the cabochon. And it's got this really cute little um, vintage Halloween picture, the little vintage witch girl um, in, the, in the setting there. And then I've made this really lovely little dangle underneath um, to use on a Halloween project. And I just thought that was really, really cute. And they would really add, you could either dangle them from the bottom of pocket letters or um, embellishments. You could put them in books. They'd be, you know, that'd be really pretty um, hanging on the side of a book. Uh, you could hang it on a book marker. There's just so many different things that you can do with these um, settings because you can glue them 
and flat because they're they're lovely and flat on the back they've got this slightly ridged surface which helps the glue stick so they they will stick to things really nicely with some e6000 or i tend to use glossy accents and that that sticks everything to everything um and i've had no problem with the glossy accents so far um and then like i say you can put the little dangle on the bottom um just to give it that little something else so that was another one that i made but that one probably is a little bit too heavy to use as a stitch marker um particularly on light lightweight yarns because it's just that little bit bigger but these smaller ones are absolutely perfect so in order to do it you will need um some of the, the settings some of the smaller um settings i've chosen to go with the silver um because that's i, I can't I, i've got some bronze ear wires but i can't find them um you will need um some of the silver ear wires now i I don't I can't remember where I got mine from to be perfectly honest I've had them in my stash for ages but I have just had a look and um, BB Craft do sell these so I will link the BB Craft version in the description box below this video um, you'll need some sort of eye pin some sort of head pin so I've got this um, head pin that's got a, a ball Ooh, if I can get my camera to focus on it it's got like a ball on the end um, but you could use a flat head pin um, you could use a piece of wire and uh, make your own sort of um, end by wrapping it over a bead or something um, so you'll, that's what you're going to need you need some jump rings i've got a few different size jump rings um in my little my little pot here um we're going to use um some of these beads or one of these beads because we're going to make one of each so um we'll need one of those beads you'll also need some smaller beads so um i've got oh i'm trying to choose what colors i want um I've got the gold ones. These are my absolute favourite from um, my last BB Craft haul. These came from BB Craft. Again, if they're still in stock, I will link these for you because they are absolutely stunning. I've used so many of these and I've still got tons left. Um, and I've got these ones which are really lovely. They're iridescent, so they, they'll go really nicely with the bead um, because you've got the iridescent. Now, I'm, I'm trying to stay quite zoomed in so that you'll be able to see um, what it is that I'm doing. I'm just um, conscious that there is going to be a bit of glare because it is getting dark here now and the lights are on. OK, um, I've also got some um, jewellery tools. So again, these are ones that I got in my last BB Craft haul. These cutters are absolutely phenomenal. They are the best cutters I have ever owned. Um, and I would definitely recommend these and buy them again. They, they're flush cutters, so they cut really, really close because um, they're flat on the back there. They're super sharp. I've used them for cutting my dies apart and for jewellery. I think if I made lots of jewellery, I probably would buy another pair so that I could have one pair for my jewellery and one pair for cutting my dies apart. Um, but so so far the surface is is absolutely fine um, i'm sure if i cut too many dies apart it, it will you know it always does affect the surface in the end um, but they have been absolutely phenomenal and these have been really really amazing too i wasn't sure how i was going to get on with these because these are the mini so they're really little um, little chain nose pliers but they've become one of my favorite tools because i can grasp the whole thing um, and i can really see what i'm doing um, and i'm not trying to to sort of um handle a really large tool they're, they're really really um little so they're they're really good um i've got a pair of um, round nose um the pliers um again i don't know where these came from i've had these in my stash forever um and then i've got some some flat nose and some bent nose these aren't great these are cheap ones that i got um i forgot them in the range or somewhere um eventually i think i'm going to replace them all with these um benacraft ones because i really really rate is it benacraft or benacreate ben create i think it is but uh oh yeah benny create but they, they'll be linked in the description box below anyway but i really rate these i'm really really enjoying those tools at the moment so let's get started so we'll start off by making the um the little cabochon one so for this you'll need one plate uh, one of the settings and then you also need your um your glass dome with an image so i've got loads and loads of images that i have i've just taken um the little domes and i've just used a little bit of fabri tac and i've glued the dome to a an image so obviously i've gone through my paper stash and just chosen things that have got really small images so this is birds this one's got um, a tiny little butterfly and a gorgeous little ladybird and then i've got a few that have got flowers on uh, like that. Um, the thinner papers um, generally are um, easier to work with so this is actually just from a free um, 
paper pad thing that came in a magazine so the paper's really quite rubbish on it but actually for this project it's absolutely ideal so um i think i'm going to go for the ladybird because i really like that one so all we're going to need for this one is we're going to need our earring setting it would help if i could move into the camera setting wouldn't it um, we need a jump ring uh, i'm going to go for a big jump ring go for that one and then we will need a bead so i'm going to go for a gold bead on this one i really do love the gold beads they are my favorite okay so first of all we need to get our image i do apologize about my camera's just rubbish i don't know what it is it was really good when I first got the phone, um, but I'm just having nothing but problems with it recently, auto focusing and, and going out of focus and stuff. Um, so I do apologize. I, I will do my best to keep an eye on it and keep bringing it back into focus. So all I've done, um, as you can see, is snip the, the piece of paper off so that I've got something a little bit more manageable. And then all I'm gonna do is cut round the cabochon that's in place. And if you just slightly undercut the cabochon, like so you don't end up with any sort of raw edges sticking out over over the edge if you did get any bits that you don't like if there's there's a little tiny bit that you you know you can't get to with your scissors just take an emery board just a, a nail emery board and just rub on that little bit that's sticking out over the edge and it will just file it back enough so that you then won't see it once you pop it on to your setting. So I've got some glossy accents. I do like the glossy accents for sticking things to metal. So I'll just need to unblock it because it keeps blocking. There we go. And all I'm going to do is pop a little bit of glossy accents. I said a little bit and then I put loads in. Do not need that much. I'm just going to take a little bit out of there because that is too much. I don't want it coming out everywhere. So I'll spread that about the tray a little bit. There we go, that's better. Um, and then I'm going to pop my little cabochon with my ladybird now in it into the tray, like so. So if I hold her up to the to the camera now, you can see that looks super cute. She is really, really lovely. Um, and I just set her to um, to dry for a second. It doesn't take long for the um, glossy accents to grab enough to carry on. So I've got a reasonably large jump ring here um, and I'm going to thread a bead. So I've got one of the little gold beads and I'm gonna thread that onto the jump ring. There we go, no, can't do it. I've just been threading these with no problems whatsoever, but my hands are starting to bother me. So I do struggle a little bit with my hands at times and they don't always seem to want to do what I want them to do. And today seems to be the day when they're not wanting to do what play. I'll just get this bead on. Okay, I've now got that on there. I think what I'd done um, was I'd pulled the jump ring out of shape a little bit. Um, so I couldn't get the, the bead on. Now, all I'm going to do is um, find the top centre. See, I'm really not having fun with my hands today. Find the top centre of my um, little cabochon. And through the top loop, I'm just going to feed my um, jump ring with the bead to the front so that the bead will be seen um, as well as the cabochon. And then I'm going to pick up my um, earring finding open it with my teeth it's a good job this is just for me um, just so that I know which way is front so that I can thread it in the right way and now I am just going to bring in my little um, tool just so that I can close this jump ring up nicely and make it meet and there we go so there we've got a really pretty little ladybird um, crochet or knitting stitch marker. Um, or like I say, you could use it as a dangle, you could wear them as earrings, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use them for. But for me, it's going to be a beautiful set of handmade, um, handmade 
stitch finders, stitch markers. Oh my goodness. I think I might just give up for today and uh, try and re-record this tomorrow. I'm not having, not having much luck. There we go. Okay, now for the um, for the second one, you want your eye pin with your you know, either the flat head or the ball head or, or whatever it is you're going to use. You want a couple of beads. So um, this time I think I'll go for these gorgeous um, oil slick looking beads. I think these are stunning. And I think they'll look really nice with the maple leaf bead. So all I'm going to do is pick out one of these beads, like so. I'm then going to pop on my maple leaf bead, making sure that I pop it up the right way. And then I'm going to pick up another one of the oil slick beads. Move them out of the way. And then I've got the start of my... Um, my little stitch marker. Now, this is where I need my um, round nose pliers, and I'm going to take them just a little bit above where the top of the, the, the top bead is, and I'm going to just bend it on like a, I think it's a 90 degree angle. I'm now going to put my um, pliers so that I'm trying to do this so that you can see, so that the wire, oops, try and get it so that the, the wire that I'm holding the the wire just a just sort of slightly above that um, bend that I've just made but between the two parts of the plier obviously and then I'm just going to pull that wire up and over the top like that I'm going to now reposition my wire, my pliers again and pull my loop upwards slightly and this is where I find these mini pliers are just amazing um, because I've got so much more control with the mini pliers and now this is something that I normally struggle with as you can see my hands don't always cooperate and do what I want them to do so I do really struggle but I have found that these mini chain nose pliers are really useful. So holding really tightly with my left hand so that, that my um, little charm doesn't go anywhere. I'm just holding really tightly to create the loop. And then with my right hand and my mini pliers, I'm just taking the wire, what's, what's left of the wire, and I'm wrapping it round until that exposed bit of wire is covered nicely. And I've got a nicely wire wrapped bit at the top there. And then I'm going to take my flush cutters and I'm going to get as close as I possibly can to the end of that wire. And give it a snip. There we go. If I've got anything sticking out, again, I can just take my little chain nose pliers and give it a little squeeze and that will just um, take that sharp edge away. So now we've got our lovely little dangle, our little um, beaded dangle bit that's got the um, the bead of the, the eye pin at the bottom. And we've made this lovely little loop at the top, which now, obviously, we can attach a jump ring to. So jump rings, always open jump rings side to side. So it's better if you use jewellery tools. I'm naughty for opening them with my fingers and then wondering why I distort them. I need some new needle nose pliers. Mine have gone walkabouts. So that's going to be on the list. There we go. So I've just opened up that, um, that jump ring. And I'm going to pop the jump ring on uh, the earring finding on the jump ring. I think it's called a lever back, the, the earring finding. And then with my tools, I'm just going to push my jump ring back into place like so and there we go so it's actually a really simple to do but you end up with a really really beautiful set of stitch markers and like I say you know you could easily use these as earrings you know if you made made matching pairs you could absolutely they would make beautiful beautiful earrings as well because they are just stunning and really sort of nice at this time of year because they're you know full themed with the um with the maple leaves and then we've got the beautiful ones with the little cabochons and the bead. Um, there we are. 
um, and they make the most amazing stitch markers lightweight really beautiful to look at there's something a little bit different you know not everybody's gonna gonna have these stitch markers um, they're gonna be individual to you and you can make them in sets so you could have you know a different set on each piece of crochet or knitting that you're doing and like I said you know you could equally use them as jewelry or you could use them as dangles you without the um, the attachments on you could just use them as embellishments these would be beautiful in the center of mini rosettes there's just so many uses for these cabochons and um, settings and these beads are just beautiful they are they're frosted glass so they're really beautiful glass beads the electroplated beads are glass as well so they do make really really beautiful jewelry as well um, that you know it's just something that a bit more special with them being um, being proper glass so I absolutely love them I'm thrilled to bits um, and these will be definitely um, going on to my crochet now and I will be getting rid of the plastic so um, as I said at the beginning this um, video has been for BB craft um, they did send me the items to have a play with and to review and show you here on YouTube um, they are really really lovely products they came really well packaged and they came really quickly as well the tools are absolutely fantastic these are back in stock they were out of stock when I um, got them um, on my first haul from BB craft they they actually were out of stock but they are back in stock now so i highly recommend those and these cutters again best cutters i've ever had um, so i highly recommend those too i will link everything in the description box below this video even the things from my last haul if they are still available um, the bits that i've used and also things like the um the lever back earring findings um i will find those because i know that beauty craft do sell them um, and i will link those so if you wanted to do this project most of what you need will be in the description box below this video so please do go on over and check BB Craft out. So that's it from me for now. I will see you all again very soon in another crafty video. Bye for now.